Hello, my name is Robin Seletsky and welcome to Learning to Play Klezmer. Um, we are going to focus today on a relatively easy ornament to bring into your playing, the grace note. And um, it hopefully will get you sounding very Klezmer-like in, in no time. And it can be very gratifying because of that. So uh, grace notes in general are, are pitched a half step below the note in the melody. So if the note in the melody is a B, you want your grace note to be A sharp. And they're played quickly and before the beat. And kind of snappy and short and clipped. Um, if our note in the melody is G, our grace note would be F sharp. And if our note in the melody is E, our grace note would be D sharp. Okay? Um, so let's try this melody that we've been working on that you heard coming into this segment played by Naftuli Brandwine. And um, let's, um, let's add some grace notes to the three pickups in each of the sections. So our first note in the melody is B. We're going to start on A sharp as our grace note. And it sounds like this. One, two, Let's try it again, just a little faster. One, two. Now you can see that um, the grace notes are kind of like the krechts, which we talked about in a couple of earlier segments. You know, where the grace note begins and the krecht, grace note ends and krecht begins, um, they kind of blend together. But that's the whole part of the style. So, so it's good to think of them actually as, as connected and as related. Um, next, we are going to talk about the trill. Now a trill is just a very fast finger action between two notes. And um, we can, for our purposes of this, learn, um, learn this melody with a trill in it between C sharp and D. So I move my finger very fast. Now, some people uh, have said that all trills in klezmer music should be a half step. I don't know that may be true. I don't think that I necessarily um, only do trills a half step. Sometimes I find keys and trills that just work better for me technically. So, um, so I can't speak to that. But this particular trill is a half step. And what I'd like to do is um, take this melody, a uh, different segment of this piece, and, um, and find where the trill, C sharp to D, occurs. Could you hear it? Let's try it slowly together. Starts on high E. One, two, three. Let's try it a little faster. One, two, three. Now, one thing about that is uh, both times that I played it, um, they were pretty much the same. In general, you want to vary. You want to vary from section to section, from bar to bar, from beat to beat. You always want to hold the listener's interest. So uh, you want to think about that ornament something a little differently the second time you play it, or, or inflect a little, a little more emphatically, perhaps. Um, something like that, or change your articulation, so that there's always interest. Um, and, um, and the other thing about all of this is that you really want to learn the style 
um, from as authentic a source as you can find. We're very fortunate to have these recordings from, the, from as far back as the 20s, and, and in some cases even slightly earlier, and, um, and with clarinetists like Naftuli Brandwein and Dave Terrace, and um, you can learn not just the tunes, but learn the inflections from them, and more importantly, learn where and where they inflected and how much they inflected. Because um, if you learn from more modern clarinetists exclusively, um, you're missing out on something very significant. You know, the, the klezmer clarinetist um, David Krakauer once told me something that I thought was very, very insightful. And he said, um, he said there's Rhapsody in Blue, and then there's the blues. So it's kind of the same thing, you know. Um, you really want to go to the source. And then when you learn it as authentically as you can, then you can be as creative with it as you want and, and fuse it with as many modern styles as feels appropriate to you. Because then it will be an organic growth. So you use the the original as a point of departure, as a place of source of inspiration and a point of departure, and then you grow from that. But if you don't start there and you just kind of work on the surface, it gets it gets a little contrived. It can get contrived. So, um, so that's just my advice, and um, and I wish you a lot of luck in learning to play klezmer music. Thank you.